Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the defending champion, the jester from Leicester, Mark Selby! Welcome the reigning world champion and world number one, The Rocket, Willie O'Sullivan! Rob Walker introduced the players to the Wembley crowd, they got a great reception and in the commentary box with the final session of this year's Masters final about to get underway, it's Steve Davis and Willie Thorne. Well there's not many better evenings than the final Thanks, night at the, the Masters. Season, they talk about needing snooker livening up, that was sensational entrance from these two great players. The former champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan against the champion, Mark Selby. The session this afternoon, Steve, was top draw. Whether it can be better than that remains to be seen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I wouldn't bet against Frame it. Frame nine, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. That'll do now, quiet, please. What a fantastic reception for both these players. If you read some newspaper re report throughout the week, apparently Snooker's dead. Yeah, right. Excellent break off from Ronnie. That's been something that uh, has been pleasing all players this week. The break off has improved throughout the last few tournaments. A lot of reds been stuck up, as you can see there from Hawkeye, that no reds are available. Fractionally oh. short of pace, <clears throat> so much so that he has left a tempter for Ronnie O'Sullivan in the yellow pocket. Well, there's a gentleman that we're very pleased to see here, James Kahn, one of the gentlemen from the Dragon's Den. I think this is his first uh, snooker tournament. And there's uh, Serge from Kasabian, the group, big fan of Mark Selby, the, the Leicester player, of course, the jester from Leicester. Here's the lad from Kasabian. Got Mark Selby over the line last year here. I wonder if Mark's paid for them to come down. <laughs> Ronnie's taking his time deciding whether this pot is a little bit too risky. Uh, this afternoon I saw Ronnie play a shot that almost took him four minutes to decide, something I've never ever seen before. Already coming up to a minute, which is very unusual for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Looks like he's decided to take the pot on, now he's decided not to. Clever shot covering the right hand side of the pack with the green. Yes, and Mark Selby doesn't seem to have any type of escape path back to the ball ken, so it may be a repeat of the last effort to somehow get into the back of that pack 
off a couple of cushions. He was a bit shy of pace last time. I doubt he'd be shy of pace this time, but it's whether he's got the angle past the brown to use those same lines. Perhaps a little bit of side spin. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, you can see there both players over the tournament have been playing very, very consistently, both over 90% pot success rate. <laughs> No way back to ball for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan didn't have a path back to Bork. I think how he's left that. Mark Selby possibly has, obviously playing this with right hand spin. Got to make sure he doesn't collide with the blue. That's the only problem. Not so bad colliding with the green, but he'll still be disappointed because, at the very least, Ronnie O'Sullivan has a decent safety opportunity. Ideally would have liked to have got behind the green, but perhaps it wasn't possible with that one. I would imagine, though, that Mark Selby could thread his way past to behind the green. The only thing he'd have to be careful of, playing this outside right red, is that he pushes a red towards the left-hand corner pocket. So there, Ronnie, as normal, keeping his hands warm. He always brings some hot water. And a little cup to, to warm his fingers, and as Steve rightly says, the, the angle there is to get him behind the green, but he's pushed the red over the corner. Has he covered it? Well, he's not covered it, but it's just gone away, enough away from the pocket to make it missable. He'll take it on, though. It's very thin. It's going to be difficult to control the cue ball. Yes, he's reluctant to get down straight the way and play it, but he'll make sure that it comes away from the pocket even should he miss the, the, the pot. He might not even play it, he might play it purposely thick. Yeah, he played it purposely thick. He didn't play the pot. And he played it excellently. That's a great shot. So a lot of safety being played this evening so far. Both these players were in fairly decent break building form this afternoon. Selby breaks of 82, 76 and a couple of 50s. Ronnie, of course, had a break of 101, 68, and a couple of 40s. So, on reflection, it's just about the right frame score, 4-4. Four, four. Yes, and it was an excellent session of snooker this afternoon. Something for everybody. A nice round of applause there from a very knowledgeable crowd here. There is the outside possibility that Ronnie O'Sullivan could take this red on and thread his way back up the table between black and reds. It looks like it's the right angle to do that, so possibly a shot to nothing. Caught it far too thin, and that's why he did collide with the, the red and black. How much damage has he done? Do, Perhaps not a lot you. if this is dead straight, because if it's dead straight, you have a lot of difficulty in getting out for the black. He's just off straight, so he can play a little stun run through. So this is the first chance in this opening session. Ideally, would like to get on the blue, really, and then get into the bunch. That would help. Played for the blue, well, but didn't hit it very well. I'd have been quite pleased with that. <laughs> he can cut the blue in. Very thin shot. 
could possibly try and cut the blue in with right hand spin and try and get into the pack of reds. Might be going in at pace here, this blue. Cue ball flying around the table off two cushions. Bit unlucky there. Very much so. Excellent shot. Six. It's a very aggressive call from you, Steve. Thanks, Willie. I thought you might play that even harder, to be quite honest. Perhaps you couldn't have got so much side spin on. This is missable. Tough red coming up here. Seven. Well, good luck and bad luck there. Mainly bad. <laughs> I suppose good luck he didn't go in off, but uh, there was a possibility there for a split second. He was going to end up on the black. And also, if it had hit the red rather than the jewels, uh, it would have brought that red into play and been on probably the blue or bought colour. So all in all, I think we'll, we'll go for the bad luck. I think he was very unlucky there. It was a good pot. Not easy to get a good safety shot here. Oh, that's a very aggressive effort to get behind one of the bulk colours. Very good Mark shot indeed. Seven. Well, it's poked its nose out, and uh, from Ronnie's perspective, not a problem to get back to the uh, bot bottom of the table, but got to make sure he doesn't put a red over a corner pocket. Well, he completely mishit that. Hit, hit it so thin, he got inside the red on the top cushion. A tempter for Mark Selby into the corner pocket. And not the type of shot these days players refuse. It's a lot more aggressive these days to pot that red. I know it's a risky one, but I don't think he likes it, though, does he? You wouldn't play that if I offered you 5,000 quid in a match. I didn't say me, I said Mark. <laughs> Seen a lot of players take these on. Screw back for the blue safety. He's not. He's not even considering it. So uh, one nil to you in the commentating stakes, will he? Good effort. Knew that that one at least he could play it as a shot to nothing. Red in the bunch would of course have been a little bit more dangerous. There's a lot of knowledgeable crowd here this evening and uh, they've travelled from far and wide. These are a uh, very knowledgeable audience, aren't they, Steve? Those. Well, budding commentators, obviously. <laughs> Red over the corner. And there they are, engrossed. I'm not too sure if that's an impression of you or something from Monty Python. Then. <laughs> I think he's got an angle on this red, and if so, he can escape from this corner. First realistic One. chance. Well, as we've said many times, there's two loose reds, and uh, if the pink spot's covered, he may decide to play for the two reds and get the pink after the two reds that are to the right of the corner there, because it would go on the black spot. But if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's not, he may go into them. <coughs> now, this is the first, as Steve said, the first real scoring Six. chance from either player. Mark Selby, as we know, did lead 4-3, the first time he led in the match. He has every chance here of leading again. Obviously, in this situation, a player would be looking to get the black back on the spot. But the fact that the pink spot is occupied, well, it means effectively the pink becomes the black, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he might bring the pink out here and get it back Seven. there immediately. And this now becomes a frame-winning opportunity. 
Now he's got a big ball at this end of the table, free in both pockets. Mark Selby would have been very frustrated at the end of the session not to have led it 5-3. was one red away really from clinching that last frame. It was a fantastic clearance from Ronnie O'Sullivan to level matters. So everything to play for. And as is always the case at the start 13. of a session, an effort and a chance to try and stamp your authority early in the session. This is one he'd love to convert. Fourteen. That was very careless. Shouldn't have been anywhere near those two reds. They both potted anyway, and he didn't play to kiss them. He just played to just come inside them and just flick out into open play. He's left himself hampered. And because he left himself hampered, you can always That's miss seven. anything. That was not a bad shot, it was the shot before. Position from red to pink in catching the two reds. Now rules missable when you're cutting back into a blind pocket, as we've seen many times before. So I'm sure it's has surprised Ronnie O'Sullivan. That was getting back to the table very quickly. One. The shot that Mark obviously meant to play, we've got a chance on Hawkeye to show you here that this is what he actually did play and get the kiss. What we can show you in a few moments' time after Ronnie's potted the next ball, we can show you now. There you see it, straight the way. That's how he wanted to play it. So he's going to be very frustrated sitting down, knowing that he now should have won this opening frame. He's going to sit and hope Ronnie breaks down. The next 30 or 40 points look straightforward. Six. Seven. Just going to make sure he gets higher on the black spot to avoid snookering himself on this red. And is he, has he snookered himself? That is a mistake if he 13. has. He has. So, can he swerve round? This is tight. He's going to have to put some side spin on. I don't like this much. What a great shot. Oh, it was risky though. Yourself, Thought he got it. 13. Both players now been careless. Mark Selbert, his last visit. As Steve mentioned there, he's got to make sure he finishes high and didn't do. So it's a typical opening frame on the final night at the Masters. Don't want to labour the point too much, but if ever there was going to be a, a situation where a, a more or less brand new cue wasn't your friend, it was on a, a touch swerve shot like that. I think he did have another option of a long lead. Possibly into the green pocket, I'm not sure, but... Pretty tense out there at the moment. Seven. Eight. Red on the pink spot is, is free, but of course that means then the pink will only be available in two pockets, but he, I don't think he's got an option to play for any other red. Now he'd like to finish short on this so he can run through and flick another red into play, and I think he can do that. 14. That's a very clever shot. He's left himself an angle to, to bring other reds into play. I don't know whether he's going to screw back for the blue or just run it through. Decided on the screw shot. 
and lucky to put the pink safe, but yeah, excellent team. shot. I've got to say, how well does Mark Selby strike those shots? It's such a positive hit. If ever you're trying to explain to a club player how to hit the ball, just copy the hit of Mark Selby. So positive through the ball. 20. too dangerous really to risk the kiss on the red by potting the red off the cushion and playing the cannon into the, the red next to the pink but looking at the scoreboard now he's 24 in front there may be a little bit of mileage in it purely because he has a, still has a chance he could finish on the black or he could even knock the pink towards the middle it's hard to, to find a case against the kiss Steve isn't it as usual sitting on the fence one. Well, I was just trying to work out the scores, actually. Um, I must admit, I didn't think the pink potted uh, where the red was, so that was an excellent positional shot he played there. Twenty-seven. looked at the slightly more difficult red along the cushion because that avails better position. He's cannon into another red here. He's 31 in front. Needs two reds, two big colours. Needs that red to bounce off the cushion and it hasn't Ready. done, so he needs one more good shot. You've got to say he's very much the favourite because even if this goes wrong, He should be able to control the situation from here. Tremendous amount of power. 34. Even though that pink was a relatively straight pot, power shot bounced the cue ball, created a bit more of an angle. 35. 5-4, Five, Selby looks ominous. Yes, this is frame ball, of course, but... Ronnie will probably carry on for the snookers as its first frame. That is very well played. The break's only 41, but he had to work really, really hard for that. 41. Still got to be careful with that red by the black, so there'll be no heroics, and quite cleverly, making sure he gets the red away from the black. White in behind the green is what he'll be playing as well. Mark Selby, 41. Excellent break. <laughs> Selby settled down. He managed to see how long it is before Henry Sullivan does. Just one snooker required. Ronnie can guarantee potting the pink or black, he'll play to pot the red here, he's just had a little glance at the scoreboard. Looks very thin, but I think he can play it slow enough to hold for the pink or black. <laughs> oh, this black would help, otherwise the pot's not a certainty. One. Doesn't really want to play the blue, it means 39 behind. One snooker, <coughs> a four-point snooker now, not enough. Six. Ronnie O'Sullivan, six. Yes, there's a... A little bit careless from Ronnie there, obviously the cut in the middle 
was very very tough to play any slower than he did. He would have, he probably played the cannon on the black, and because uh, he missed it, had to take the blue, which as Steve said, now needs one to tie. Hello, you can't play oh. Mark. You're too good a player to even think about and playing a that. Do you know what? If that red was a bit further up the table, it'd be very close to a free ball. It's not. That's one of the most careless shots I've ever seen Mark Selby play. A body blow came in frame eight, a frame he should have won to go 5-3. If he throws this one away, it will be tough to see him remain his composure in the next uh, ten or so minutes. That's a little bit lucky from Ronnie, nearly perfect, but Mark can get through to this. Yes, it was very unlucky. He could have put Mark Selby in a lot of trouble there. He's in a fair bit of trouble anyway, in some respects. So this is a tough safety to get. Good from. Black's a bit out of commission though, so Ronnie may refuse anything that he can't get on the black, should he have a go at the red. I was just going to ask you which way you'd play it. I'd have played to cut the red in the side cushion, which he has done. Probably a little bit too hard though, needs the blue to come to his rescue. Which it has, and uh, I think Ronnie can clip the edge of this, can he? Or is it off the bottom cushion? No, he can clip it. Well, this looks as if it. You know, I thought for a minute it was just going to get there, but. Excellent, so good. Yes, even so. Which way this time, Steve? Same shot? I think he's unfortunately got to push it towards the black. He's got the weight very well, very nice here. He'd be very he'd be delighted to see where that's ended up. <laughs> Fortunate, didn't play to put it there like Steve suggested. He played to put it on near the black or on the side cushion. Ronnie's played two or three great safety shots on the trot, but this may be quite an easy escape because he can clip the red onto the green and uh, play the white back up towards the black spot area. As long as he doesn't knock the green in, that's the only thing that can go wrong. And having seen him going off, Steve, that would be in his mind. Yeah, he has an alternative safety shot, putting the red on one side cushion and the cue ball on the other side cushion. Sometimes they're easier options. But if he does clip it onto the green, he can't fail to get the snooker. But it is. A little bit dangerous. Took your choice, Steve, because the plant must have been on. Any problem with that, if you don't get the snooker, you're asking for trouble, but it appears to have played it very nicely indeed. Well, obviously, we can't tell from here that he can see this red. And that's gone OK, because I don't think he can get to the right-hand side of the brown with enough side. Well, good parts for Geronio O'Sullivan. The bad part, the blue's gone safe. Makes the clearance in one visit more difficult. Of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan would be clearing to draw. That's different, and all of a sudden, oh, from having won the frame Three, after potting that pink, effectively four. won the frame, certainly in his mind, all of a sudden... Well, there's three things Ronnie can do here, isn't there? He can play to pot the pink as a free ball, play it slow enough to still snooker him, have it played from there, or replace. What would you do? He could get the blue out and play behind the black. It's far too advanced, Steve. Surely he's only <laughs> pot the pink or put him back. Well, he's got to try and clear up as well. He's got to try and force the pace here and... Uh, Loop. One each. The Nugget has come out of retirement and called a shot right. Phone the police. <laughs> oh, 
Selby's played three very careless shots in this frame. And it's unlike Mark because he's usually very meticulous in his uh, safety exchanges. I mentioned this afternoon it was yourself in the 80s who was, was the best all-round player. Then, I, then it was John Higgins. But Selby is very close to being that. Fantastic match player. Up against it all of a sudden here. Ronnie O'Sullivan needs, at the moment, red with brown. <laughs> Blue goes into open play. Red with brown. Is it time to push the boat out? I think it probably is. He can play on and off the cushion for the brown in the corner. He can run through and play for either blue, pink or black as well. Which way will he play? I think he has to take the pot on. I think it's time to have a go. Well, is this fluked? Has he fluked it? Has he fluked it? Well, you can't believe that, can you? Mark Selby's just looked up at the commentary box as if to say, how on earth can that happen? I think it's you who's talked about the snooker gods in the studio the other day, and because Mark's kind of played a couple of bad shots, it's amazing that uh, they don't forget. Five. Well, overscrewed that, but being left-handed as well. He's a good strike on this, though. Oh. <laughs> Seven. This fluke. Very rarely do you see a fluke go. You see it go along the top cushion, as we saw with John Higgins. His fluke black against uh, Ding Zhong Wei earlier on, but to cling to the cushion against the nap as well—that's very, very unusual. This will be a body blow. Ten. Well, when Mark Selby initially took on that speculative 14. cut into the corner pocket, the last thing really on his mind was the possibility of going anywhere near the middle, but he mishit it so badly, pretty thick, I think, that uh, the cue ball careered into that middle pocket. Yeah, but it was the way he missed the snooker and left the free ball as well. For somebody of Mark's class, 19. that's just unheard of. I mean, he, he's, he's too good a player, and that just shows you what nerves can do for you. He made a break of 41 earlier on in this frame and looked to be in control. Played one bad positional shot. 25. But it's been the fluke from O'Sullivan. <coughs> That is now winning the opening frame. It was a very, very scrappy affair. Each player had plenty of chances. Selby should have won it, as he should have won the eight frame eight this afternoon. He didn't. He's lost them both and now trails by five frames to four. And good evening, John Parrott and Ken Doherty. Both of you have played in Wembley finals, both former world champions, of course. What are your thoughts as we settle in for this final? Well, Mark Selby would be very disappointed, not only with a monstrous piece of luck that Ronnie O'Sullivan's just had but he really should have won both of the last two frames and he's lost them both and he now finds himself behind but the fluke on the red I mean it's so unusual usually this, this sort of shot hits the jaws runs along the top cushion and goes in the other top pocket but to go all the way down it must have had side on it and kept it hugging to the cushion and what a fluke that is no matter how good you are a little bit of luck goes a long way mm. Ken I find it very interesting uh, sort of we know what a great player Ronnie is, but when he changes hands, it still amazes you all, doesn't it? Well, he's played a, a pressure yellow there that, you know, most players would, would find it difficult to play with the rest, but he's played, he switched left-handed and played a, a just floated the yellow in and absolutely perfect on the green, and, you know, how timely or how crucial will that fluke be? I mean, as John said, Mark Selby should really be 6-3 up in this match. He's lost the last two frames that he should have won very early, and he finds himself 5-4 behind. Thank you. Good crowd tonight, James. Yeah, great. We've had three tenors. Can you believe it? We've got four willies now. <laughs> <laughs> Did the three tenors ever have a number five in the charts? Snooker Lippy got to number five. I think they had a number one a few times, didn't they? Three tenors and four willies. Amazing. Another, it just shows you how, when you can have a couple of body blows, as the Glads talked about in the studio, Steve, the fact that Mark Selby should have been 6-3 in front. He's now 5-4 behind, and that's the worst break-off he's done in the whole tournament. 
Well, reeling from that last frame, and as John said in the studio, from the frame in the first session. So, an early chance for Ronnie O'Sullivan to try and keep the heat on. Some the crowd still please. getting back to their chairs, so Ronnie's just waiting a bit of time just until they get settled down. Fantastic crowd here this evening, obviously, with so many people. Understandable, a bit of crowd movement. Looks to be no problem to stay on the black. Maybe a bit wide, but dropping it in. One. <laughs> Reds don't look ideally placed, but how often have we said that okay. with Ronnie O'Sullivan Eight. at the table? And a couple of shots later, they're spread all over the table. Two reds to the right-hand side of the pack, or the red to the right-hand side of the pack. Pack looks like a nice one to collide with. So an angle, a little bit low on the black. Nine. Pot the black into the red on the right. Should open up nicely. Yes, if he could actually get the gap in between the two reds, he'd actually prefer that, but he, the gap's not quite there. That's what he actually tried to do. <laughs> he played it OK. Still not perfect, though. If it had looped through the gap there, he would have uh, had them spread far and wide. It just caught the red that Steve mentioned. Not too sure if he can avoid any more cannons on the reds here. He's trying to trying to keep that thick. Mario Sullivan, six thick. thick keep on the black he got the dreaded kick which threw the ball thicker just fractionally you can see there Ronnie up quickly realizing he missed it so a reprieve Mark One. Selby would dearly love to get a few points on the board here well this is another one of those gaps it's absolutely perfect the one directly above the black, he doesn't want to hit that full ball. If he can hit the half ball on the left through that little gap, that would be a similar shot to what Ronnie tried to play in the previous one. But he played that poorly. Boy, he played that bad. Oh, what a slice of luck that is. What a slice of luck. How, look how the balls have come, come to rest here. Looks like it's going to be safe. And all of a sudden, the ball pushes another ball towards the middle pocket. Mark Selby, eight. At the moment, Mark Selby is reeling. If he was a boxer, he'd be on the ropes, and the opponent would be in a situation to take him down. It's not exactly the same at snooker. You have more time to recover. Fortunately for Mark Selby, he's left nothing. And all of a sudden, when you're struggling out there, sometimes even the safety shots become difficult. Playing thin off the red by the middle pocket, up and down the table. He's got to play it thin enough to avoid the red on the way back, but not too thin. That's a better safety, but the length is just going to be short. Yes, I think you'd settle for that. Fortunately, the Browns obstructing que good queuing, so although he, he spotted a shot to nothing. This red here, even though it's bridging over the Brown, I think the only good thing, as you mentioned a few moments ago, you feel like Mark Selby's on the ropes, and I totally agree with you. 
but I'm not too sure Ronnie's feeling too good at the moment so he may get chance to just get his form back that he had this afternoon I think it's one of those matches at the minute Steve where it's a case of who's going to play well first well that's why I think this match has been fascinating um, we've seen some incredible snooker this week where players have just not missed the ball it hasn't been exactly the case in the final it's still been excellent snooker but there's been an element of doubt in a lot of the frames as well it's added to the fascination Mark Selby left with a bit of a problem here that red's a lot more difficult than it looks don't like that do you no there's reds in either top pocket isn't there both of which avail uh, a tough pots and b very tough to get back into a safe position and to get back into Bork's a problem, that's the reason he's taking so much time. He may decide to roll this one in down the left-hand side and drop on the black. As long as he gets the white on the back cushion, it might be worth the risk. <clears throat> Loathe to play a safety shot with possible pots and safety at the same time. So players always looking for an opportunist into a frame of snooker, into a break, and this is the possible shot that Hawkeye thinks, oh, on one second, apologies. Is he playing this with backspin? Not too much. Wow, what, what a screw back. What a screw back. What a shot that was. That is so unlucky. I mean, he's going to be put straight back in, no question, but... I mean, Mark Selby showed what Q power he possesses. Not absolutely sure that uh, the situation's worse for Mark Selby. He's got a, a long red he can now take on into the right corner. Could he dump it onto the top cushion? I'm not too sure if it's dead straight. Yeah, just off straight, so you can play the run through and play for blue or bought colour. This shot looks great when you get close to the pot because you get a good white, but if you hit it like that, you lose the path of the white and hence you're going to stick them up. Look at me, it looks so silly, but has the yellow come to his rescue? We've seen everything here, haven't we? Goodness me. Ronnie can't believe it. Mark can't believe it. Amazing. Is that, uh, is that the reward for the unfortunate fluke on the pink? He's the man upstairs watching this. Match. It's been a very, very strange start, hasn't it? It really has. And that could be a real saver for Mark because, as you mentioned, he's not feeling at his best at the moment. And all of a sudden, if he had left Ronnie, here's the shot being played again. Because he hit it so thick, all the pace got out, went out of the white. If it had stuck Ronnie in and Ronnie wins the frame at one visit, he'd now be sitting down thinking, oh, 6-4, I've let it go. I should be 5-3 in front. I should be 6-3 in front. But now he's got a chance just to regroup. You must have had negative feelings sometimes, Steve, did you? Even though you were the best player in the world for a long time. Did you ever let negative things come into your mind? I, I think when you're um, in full flow on the snooker table, as we've seen this week, so many of the players, that, you know, they, they, they get in the groove and it's, a, it's an easy game. It's, it's really the sort of sometimes the, the great players are decided by what happens when things go wrong and how quickly they can recover. So you know, can Mark Selby recover his composure before the interval. I know it seems early in the frame and in the match, but sometimes it only takes one good shot to get back in. That's, a, that's perhaps the difference. One good shot and all of a sudden your confidence comes back. If Mark could miss the side of the pack and get back into Bork as a shot to nothing, he could play this row in the middle, but I don't see how he can miss the edge of the bunch. And it's one of those, if you do play it, you're going to have to risk just cannon into the reds and hope to be on black or yellow. How brave a shot to pot the red, stun past the face of the blue for the black into the left-hand corner. Yeah, How like brave that. is that? Like that. I think he's going to have to play that, Steve. Knowing full well if he misses it, he's going to leave Ronnie O'Sullivan the red by the black spot. Okay. He's already come around the table to have a look at the black. It obviously pots. This is the type of shot, if you get this, all of a sudden the mistakes of the first frame evaporate. Yes, he's looked at the angle, but he's going to have to, unfortunately, finish only about a foot away from this bottom right-hand pocket, which means the black's going to be at distance. If the blue wasn't on its spot, that's the line that he'd like the cue ball to go over, the blue. 
and then we get get a lot closer to the black but that blue is just in the way to bring the white out into open play something like this would be nice just across the face of the blue now oh, has he got it he's playing it he's playing it but he flicked the blue needs a bit of luck and he's got plenty One. well haven't we seen everything Ronnie's laughing at me in the commentary box as he saw that cue ball career into the jaws goodness me this has been a very strange opening to a Masters final night eight Nine. That was missable as well. No, it looked an easy shot. Now, obviously, the yellow has become a bit of a problem for Mark Selby. Yes, he'd like to get rid of that after the next red, if he could, to make those two reds available for the black. So if he can get on the yellow, he should play to get on it now. Sixteen. Just coming round to have a little look what angle he needs. As Steve mentioned, that's causing a problem. Once that's out of the way, this becomes a frame with an opportunity. And uh, I don't think we've seen as many flukes this week as we've seen already in this match this evening. There's been some strange goings on. Decided that the 17. getting the yellow was too tricky, so he's getting on the pink this time. There are a couple of reds at the side of the pack that do pot, so he's in position for one of those now. The right hand red of that triangle of six, the loose triangle of six, pots as well. 23. But then after that, there's problems. It's not the best ball to get on, is it, the yellow from there, where it is? Yeah, but he's got to get rid of it, Steve, yeah. as you rightly say. OK, those two reds are free either so side of the triangle, but... There'll be another two free once the yellow's gone. So not not the black here, the yellow. I think so. Unless he's going to leave himself hampered. If he's going to leave himself where he has to queue over the bunch, he's just having another look now how how much room he's got to get onto the yellow. He knows it's the right shot, but can he play it in such a way that the yellow's unmissable? He doesn't want to leave it so he's hampered. So he has the ball, and this is already the key ball in this frame. It's a little bit thinner than he would like, but should be able to miss the kiss on the two reds. On the right hand side to make sure he does miss those two reds, and now he'd be disappointed not to win the frame at this visit. And I think the way the match is gone, it's a frame he needs to win. 26. Twenty-seven. Leaving the black alone for that particular particular positional shot. Blue and pink pot into the right middle. You can see the head shaking there of Mark Selby. It does do a bit of shaking on the shot. It's not necessarily nerves 33. in the sense of being frightened. It's just uh, the adrenaline, really. This is the only one of the top players that has any sort of movement in his head, and it's just something he's always done. Terry Griffiths used to shake like a leaf, still knocked him in off the lampshade. Yeah, but that was nerves with Terry, it's not with Mark. You see a little bit of movement with the head, and when he plays the shot, though, you can see the head is perfectly still. As Steve mentioned, the bottom one of that cluster of five will pot in the opposite corner to the one he's playing the black into. There's a bit of mileage in playing the cannon, that, and that red there, the middle of the three on the right-hand side. The only reason being, it might not get a better angle on the black to do that. I don't think there's either of the four reds are plantable into any pocket. Or is it the wrong red? Is it the wrong ball? That's twice is it the wrong ball. He's 41. getting into them too much. He may just have potted the black a bit thick as well. It may have slowed the cue ball down and, as well. So 
He's got a long one into the yellow pocket. You'd expect him to get this. It looks lined up. These are not that difficult. Yes, it helped that it was dead straight, didn't it? That took all the pressure off the pot, the fact that you could keep cue ball, object ball and pocket all in your eye line. And it's only like really playing a, a dead straight black off the spot, as long as you stay still. It was virtually unmissable, but luckily for him it was straight. And now Mark Selby will be horrified if he doesn't win the frame at this visit. Yes, and this would go a long 47. way to repair the damage of the shock of losing the first frame. Yes, it's hard to say. 48. Well, he's put the old Moody, I've got a kick routine there. He just put a bit of side on that he didn't mean to. Any harder, that wouldn't have gone in. It was hard to d decide which is uh, giving him the most problems. The, having the two-hour break in between losing the last frame of the session when he's had two hours to think about it, or losing the first one this evening when he's only had ten minutes to think about it, or five minutes even. But with that red now wiping its feet and going in, 40 in front, red, black, red, and we're all square again. 54. Fifty-five. Not sure if the pink spots. Obviously, Jan Verhas immediately on it and thinks 61. it does. Doesn't even bother to check the spot. So, not going to get in the way of any queuing problems. And over the line. 62. And I think this time he is over the line and a very relieved Mark Selby will be level. Yes, I'm so 69. apprehensive to say which player's in stroke at the moment. I think it's who makes Seven. the less mistakes at the moment. But the final of the Masters, Steve, you've been here in front of a... I think we've got best part of 2,000 people here this evening. And there's always tension at Wembley. Yes, you know it's a special occasion. 77. And even the best players in the world don't always produce the goods on the biggest of occasions. 78. It's great when it works well. Always found it quite an overawing venue, the conference centre. Wembley Arena, not too much different. And all of a sudden, with the frame one. 81. The right arm gets a bit freer. Can breathe a bit easier. Bit of a shot he played with the rest. Yeah. 83. <laughs> Screwing it in round three cushions. It was a brilliant positional shot. Eighty-six. Most of Mark Selby's centuries have come in the last three years when he became the, the real deal as far as a player is concerned. Take away 95. the last three years, Mark had only made about 20-odd centuries. He's made the last 60-odd centuries in the last three years. That's how much he's improved as a break builder. Here's another example here. 101. His 106 competitive century break, and it's come at the time when he needed it most, when it looked like he was finding a little bit of trouble. But the break of 106 Mark means Mark Selby has levelled the game again at 5 all, and we've got a great final on. A 29th century of this Masters tournament. Uh, John, in a match in a frame, things can change very, very quickly. Well, Willie said in commentary, strange things are happening here. And I don't think I've ever seen two consecutive shots of professional snooker that have been so different. Mark Selby plays an absolutely brilliant shot here to screw back into the Bork area. And so unfortunate, he knocks the pink in there and ends up in a horrible situation. 
I mean, you can't believe how unlucky that is to watch it. And then the next shot he has to play, he gets put back into bat, hits this, completely mishits it. The red goes round the table, hits the yellow full ball. It looks for all the world as if the reds are going to be on, and the yellow comes down and covers the pockets. Amazing. And here's the last one. Uh, I mean, he tried to get in between the, the blue and the top cushion, back up, but he, he's very lucky, he just hits the gunk and, and lands on the black perfectly. But I think he deserved that little bit of luck, there's no doubt about it. He lost a, a frame where Ronnie fluked the red and then the, the pink going in. Uh, I think the luck is, you know, twos and fro's, but I think he deserved it overall, you know, and made a great frame win and break from that, and that's really settled him down. Yeah, Steve Davis was suggesting that Mark was reeling and he was on the ropes, needed to regain his composure. Yeah. And sometimes when you just get a good break and a few shots go your way, that can happen very quickly. But this is why he's a champion. I mean, apart from the fact of improving as a, ma as, as a break builder, as Willie said, he's also improved as an individual on a snooker table. He's harder, he's full of grit and determination, and he never knows when he's beat. Yeah. And he's in there, you know, punching his way to the end. Yeah, he's a gutsy performer, Ken, isn't he? He is. A but he's got a great tactical brand, you know, and he's, he has—he really has everything, and that's why he's one of the top players in the world. He's not giving up his trophy without a fight, and uh, he's still in there fighting. Unbeaten at Wembley, of course, as well, which is a remarkable record, seeing he only came here for his debut last year and all the way and won it. And, and also we have to consider as well, to win it, then retain it. Thorburn, Hendry, the much-missed Paul Hunter, it's not easy. No, certainly isn't. There's a, there's a long list of people who've won this tournament and haven't come back and done it. Um, but we're in for an absolute classic at 5 all. at the moment you don't know which way it's going to go. I'm just listening to the reception that Ronnie gets when he comes 11. into the arena. Mm. Does that play on your mind at all sometimes when your opponent gets this massive reception, Ken? It's hard to play against the crowd, but uh, sometimes it can work against the player who, who gets more of the support as well. It can put a bit more pressure on him. And as an individual, sometimes it can spare the other one on. Depends what attitude you've got towards it. If you think, right, I'm going to show you, you know, sometimes it can make you find a few points from somewhere. Yes, always adored by the fans, Ronnie O'Sullivan, but Mark Selby's got his own supporters. A lot of travelled up from Leicester to watch him, as they did last year. He's got an army of supporters. We've always been blessed in Leicester. When I was playing on the circuit, we used to have a lot of travelling people come to watch. And uh, the same with Mark. He's a likeable young man. I used to have the footballers. He's got the pop groups. Yes, well, they did travel in the opposite direction to where the match was, really. Ooh, that was a low blow, wasn't it? Mr Lineker was always watching me play, you know that. But we have got a fantastic game on now. Neither player in top form, albeit that Mark Selby's just had a century. That's the first glimpse of the prowess in the break building department for a couple of frames. It looks like he can go off the side of the pack and down the table. He's choosing other options. Well, that's a nice option. Oh, nearly went in. Has it poked its nose out? Very difficult one, even if it has. <laughs> that's tough. Yes, when Mark Selby was standing there waiting for his walk-on, you could make the case he either looked totally focused or a bit nervous. I suggest the former. And perhaps now back on track. Is he going for this? No. It was pretty thin, wasn't it, Willie? Yeah, I'm not too sure whether he could see enough of it, but uh, Ronnie could be tempted with this red. It wasn't the best white he played there, Mark. Ronnie could be tempted with this red in the corner, knowing that he can screw off two cushions and be on the black. Not having anything, is he, in the long department, Ronnie? Th this tournament, I've seen him refuse more long shots than I have throughout his whole career. Obvious safety shot off the side of the pack, that loose red, just out from the pack. As I'm sure you're aware from watching snooker regularly, the only problem, where did the other reds go? And there will be something going in this direction to the left.
to be happy with that. Although it's presented no problems for Ronnie O'Sullivan, who I'm sure can screw back behind the yellow. That's a bit more aggressive. Yeah, the safety's tough now because the red on the left-hand side cushion is stopping the thin safety shot off either the side of the pack or the one he's going for now. He'd have to play a little bit thicker than he would like just to make sure that he misses the kiss on the red. But then the kiss on the brown will be a problem in going back into Bork. Yeah, there's the red, and that's a poor shot. Has he got away with it? I think he has. Ronnie's just smiling at Mark as he walked round the table there. He's trapped him, he's made the mistake, and very rarely, Steve, do you ever see Ronnie complain about run of the ball, but that is the first time I've seen it for three or four seasons at least. Sometimes when a player, tra you, you feel cheated a bit as a player, don't you, where you've, you've actually got enough pressure on your opponent that he's, you force the error by your good safety play. Your opponent makes the error and you don't get the reward for it. It looks like Ronnie's picked out a possible shot to nothing here across the table and back across to where roughly he is now. Has he left anything? He played it as if he wouldn't leave anything. The one directly above the black will pot and you can see Ronnie's frustration there that, well, I say it will pot, looking at that picture, maybe only off the far jaw, so that's a very, very good attempt from Ronnie. Mark can see the one in Bork, which he can still in behind the brown. See how that way he's playing the cue ball, just in a position where he can play it as a shot to nothing. Very clever shot. That was a good attempt at a pot as well. He wasn't that far out. And where he would have finished up, he wouldn't have put it past him to knock the, br the blue in. Now, can Mark Selby get enough of this red to screw behind the brown? Turned down the opportunity to get behind the brown in preference to get the cue ball as close to the top cushion as possible. And there's never anything too wrong with that, as we've mentioned many times in commentary. When a snooker player can get his hand on the table, it makes the shot a lot more difficult. This is a tough one. What's he trying here? Very risky. Ah, oh, well, the roll is not, that's not so risky. <laughs> that's okay. I like you for a second, thought he was going to try and swing it round the two cushions off the two reds that uh, are near the top cushion. Ronnie's still smiling at a few friends in the audience. He's got a friends in the audience this evening. He had a little chuckle across the audience to Patsy Fagan, who's sitting in the front row. What, what a great player Patsy Fagan was, and he was just, he was just laughing that uh, Ronnie was laughing at Patsy with the run of the ball that was going on. It's not only the Masters that has been played at Wembley. Patsy Fagan actually won a tournament here. I think it was the Dry Blackthorn Cup or something that was played here at, at Wembley. Patsy won that. A fly on the ball there, whizzing around all over the tail. Is it a moth? He's not, is he? He has. <laughs> but Jan Verhaas be very intent on catching this. Oh, and he's one of the most accurate referees in the game today. I feel sorry for the moth. Well, concentration broken, but erring oh, on the thin side goodness. is never as bad an option Ron, as sorry, Mark Sal before. hitting it thick. Yes, you don't mind that, Steve, do you? You don't mind if, if you play the shot again, but of course with the new three-miss rule, you can afford to play the thin clip once more. You'd expect him to get it because the white's not in a position where there's any danger, really. Yeah. Right. Yes, you, you wouldn't uh, think he'd make the same mistake twice, but 
this is the area that possibly would be having trouble with with a, a new cue just getting those subtle shots safety shots length of the table no damage done but he'll be disappointed with that wait a minute coming around the table what's he looking at the two ball plant he's looked long and hard I think this is on the way he's looked at it Ray Sullivan was on walkabout as well having a look to see whether he felt he left it on I said no damage done but oh that looks nice it is missable but I would suggest very gettable it's all about the cue ball here he's gonna have to play it very very thin it's a case of whether he wants to play it slow enough to be on a black or play it at a bit of pace and be on blue or bought color but he did his cut a little bit harder than that. I don't know whether this is going to spring out far enough. One. The greens come to his rescue. Cue ball's going to be doing some mileage here. But even if he goes astray, he's got the one along the top cushion. But he'd like... Perhaps one of the other loose reds up the top there. Has he come far enough? Very, very nice indeed. Four. The red along the top cushion was missable. Now he's just got to work out what to do. If he left himself just where the reds are here, or with the white ball. Five. Does he now play the pot and smash into the pack? which is risky, or does he just play for the loose reds? I think he'd have to play for the loose reds. Yeah, he's got two at the bottom of the bunch that will pot, so a little drag with side, and he saw his move his hand very quickly there. I think he felt he hadn't got enough side on that Twelve. when he hit it, but he just about got there, didn't it? He wanted to be straight on this, and he's not. He may have to play up for the blue. Let's have a look at what kind of angle he's got on this red, whether he can yeah, just about run through, but he's going to be pushing this red safe. Got to be careful here. Well, he could have potted that 13. black and, and careered into the rest mm. of the, the pack. It was an option. And yeah. Of course, it could have gone wrong as well. But all of a sudden, now you look at how the packs turned out. Possibly could have cut that in, gone into the, the reds by the pink spot, but it probably would have gone wrong as well. <laughs> that was the one that went wrong the previous shot, wasn't it? He, he had no option there but to, to push a red safe, but he played that as just about as good as he could, and he really got into that really nicely. OK, he's only got pots in both middle pockets, but the white took off and went into it for the second time. He cued that beautifully. This is the key shot, though. If this goes in, it could be a frame winner. Well, these are always missable. Obviously, the two players that have reached the final of any tournament are in stroke, so you wouldn't expect him to miss it. Twenty-one. Well, you've got to take your hat off to Mark Selby once again, because when he was 5-4 behind, um, looked for all the money that he was going through in a really shaky spell, and he's replied with breaks of 101, 21 and counting, and this is not beyond the realms of possibility that he'll score very heavily here. The balls are perfect. Yeah, it's interesting. Mental resilience and great potting, but of course, as we've seen, it wasn't without mistakes where a little bit of luck came into the equation as well. So you have to make the most of that luck. Ronnie O'Sullivan now can do nothing about this. And probably if you're a Ronnie O'Sullivan fan, you feel quite aggrieved at the situation. I think he can hold for the pink, but he may not be able to. So down for the blue or a bulk colour. Twenty-nine. Blue's too thin, so a choice of brown or green. The green avails absolutely perfect positions on the ones to the left of the pink. The brown you'll have to play on and off the cushion. The green's definitely the easier shot here for positional purposes. You can under hit this. Now, uh, you know, if he's not on it, uh, you know, you could, yeah. the, green was, the green was the only shot you couldn't get in trouble. You'd get in trouble from the brown. Well, it was a bit of a thin cut on the green, but actually there was 
that option that it went wrong that positional shot okay you count yourself a bit unlucky you've landed betwixt and between but it was always going towards the pink wasn't it you'd expect him to get this it's a judgment cut but he hasn't got to do too much with the white ball yeah good recovery good recovery he won't be busy taking the ground this time. 34. Not that it doesn't have the same angle, of course, as he did on the last time when it could have gone wrong, but the green now or blue now will avail perfect position. The blue's perfect. Four reds he can get on here. And he's on all four. Thirty nine. Well, he's over-screwed that fraction as well. He wanted to be a little bit lower on the pink than that, and then it would have been an easy stun for any one of the four reds, and all of a sudden, he seems to have just gone a bit too far. It's caused a bit of a problem. You can say adrenaline is... Uh causing him a few problems this evening. I think every shot that he has played badly, Steve, is when he's overscrewed it. Yes. 46. The, the, he wouldn't like to, really wouldn't have been so close to this red uh, as this. Uh, probably be no problems and run through for the pink. 47. Looks like he's going to be over the finishing line before having to play any, anything difficult. Under hit that a fraction. 53. Gotta say though, regardless of any mistakes and the odd bit of luck, great talent and great queuing. The shot he wants to play is to screw round two cushions to stay on the black in the same pocket, but the red on the cushion is where he'd like the cue ball to go, so he might not be able to play the two cushion shot here. See, that red was just making things awkward. 54. Hence, he's played a poor shot, because not on nicely either pink or black. That red wasn't there. That's exactly where the white ball needs to hit the cushion to come round the two cushions for the black. It was made awkward because of that red. Got to be careful here. And carefully was, and perfect on the red. The break goes to 61. 61. The lead 65. Red and colour to take the lead once again at 6-5. 62. No reason now that the pressure's off for him not to be able to go on to make back to back centuries here. Seventy six. It's a bit of a shout where the last three reds are, Steve. Seventy seven. Well only because the pressure's off. Pop this black, knock a red out, get on another red, things like that. How's he going to make one now, then? 84. 84. Just enough room, I think, to get through to the potting angle of this red. Be screwing back for the blue, because the black would leave tight on the cushion. Wow. Justin, <laughs> <laughs> he's got some cue power, this guy. 85. Unlucky, really, but the brown's actually turned out to be nice. If the brown goes in, as we see the red, beautiful power, he can drop behind both these red, one in the middle and one in the corner. Needs to drop behind it, though. If he's dropped behind it, that's excellent. That is very unlucky. Deserved a centre off that last 89. shot. 89. He'll cut it in. 
good shout from free. Steve to try and get a centre on that oh, position, but he did what he had to do. He had to win a frame again at one visit. He did that with a break of 89 to lead 6-5. I first picked up a snooker cue when I was five years old, and my dad brought me a, a snooker table for my fifth birthday. Uh, not really, no, because I very rarely went. <laughs> I started watching it when my dad used to play and picked it up when it was on TV and just fell in love with the game. I think the first tournament I won was just a junior tournament back home and I think I only got something like £80 for winning it, but back then it felt like a million pounds. It was the Grand Prix at Preston and I played uh, Wayne Brown, who's no longer on the tour and I managed to win 5-4 and I think I had a 99 break in the final frame. Still not spent none of it, still in the bank on that tight. <laughs> Probably Willie Fawn, I think. I only used to pl practice with him every now and again, very rarely, but I mean, the first day he asked me if I wanted a game. I mean, I just relished it and couldn't say yes quick enough. The first time I made it into the top 16 was obviously a great feeling, because that's all I've ever aimed for, to get into the top 16 and to be world champion and world's number one. All I've ever done when I was younger just followed Snook, so it would probably be the Jimmy White, Stephen Hendry era when it was 18, 17 in the world final. Jester from Leicester, leading 6-5, the last frame before the mid session interval and a change of commentary. This could well go all the way. Second time this evening, he's broke off terribly. This time the yellow's come to his rescue, but a long pot available. And Ronnie, I think, needs to stamp a little bit of authority on this match. It's slipping away. Of that shot, Steve, well, unlike most players who play them as a shot, and I think Ronnie always plays them at a pace to make it a shot for something. Yes, at this level of play, you've more or less got to play for position off a shot like that. You don't get that Three. many good chances. Now, with the pack as it is. How's Ronnie O'Sullivan going to go about Four. splitting it open? Well, he'd like to do it now, because if he went into them, that red would be available. As you can see there, though, he hasn't got the angle to do that. And when he goes into them in a few moments' time, he could stick on them. Eleven. So this is not an ideal opportunity, this. But I've got to be honest, he is about the best Twelve. breaker of the pack I've ever seen. Now, he sometimes plays the stun into them but if he can arc it round the first red and play the screw, you may see the white go into the pack twice here. There goes the white twice, and he's stuck to them. He arced it round the front red, which he had to do, but he didn't get into them the second time. 19. There was always going to be an element of that shot that had to rely on some sort of luck. He just couldn't guarantee getting a nice split there. Obviously, the safety shot is now an option. The very speculative possible double well with a bit of safety I don't like that much <laughs> so safety if any you were as aggressive as this out there Steve Ronnie O'Sullivan 19 <laughs> two reds on the side cushion on the right of the table are a problem in this safety shot Shouldn't have too much difficulty in getting around the back of them. Oh. Is that one of yours? Well, it can't be one of yours, can it, on the on the wall there, Willie? Well, he's not spotted it because the hair is this side of the table, <laughs> not the other side, but it's quite a big one, isn't it? That's one from your nose. <laughs> it's an unpleasant thought. Two reds on the right-hand side are stopping in play off the loose red to the right of the pack. If he's playing around the back of the black, he's going to have to hit this really well. And he's hit it perfectly. Good shot. He's got all the shots, this boy, in the safety department. With the three inches or four inches of pace, Ronnie O'Sullivan would have been in big trouble. This is what Ronnie's got. He can either 
he can play the the half ball safety shot there. He won't be playing the pot on that. He just play the half ball safety and a little bit of check side back into Bork. But the check side's got the double kiss. Is it Ronnie's turn to have a bit of luck? I don't think so. I think he can get through to this red. What a bad mistake that was. One. Looks like the hare has just been spotted. Well, he obviously hit that a lot thicker than he wanted. Thinner, he probably would have escaped down the table. So, a chance now for Mark Selby to put Ronnie O'Sullivan firmly on the ropes. And how amazing and quickly this game can turn around. Eight. I must admit we are all guilty of thinking that Ronnie O'Sullivan is going to win every match and every tournament he plays because he just makes Nine. the game look so ridiculously easy. But we've got to realise, and I'm sure this massive crowd are expecting, apart from the people from Leicester, of course, are expecting an O'Sullivan win. But he's playing against one of the best players in the world, and there's still quite a few players out there that are capable of beating Ronnie. There's 16. at least half a dozen. Yes, but on 17. another day, with some of the shots we've seen tonight, Ronnie O'Sullivan could have walked away with his first session. A couple of bits of fortune from Mark Selby. Not too much wrong from Ronnie O'Sullivan, but where you've got to admire Mark Selby is... 24. How he's picked himself up here, and all of a sudden looks every bit the predator he was in his semi-final match against John Higgins. This is amazing, wasn't it? In frame nine, we were talking about that Mark Selby's on the ropes and you know, needed something to go in his favour. A little bit of good run went in his favour, and since then, he's now put Ronnie on the ropes. Just like a boxing 32. match at the minute. Thirty-three. Ronnie perhaps under pressure in a, in a different way. It was of um, Mark Selby's doing that he got himself under pressure. All of a sudden, other things have conspired to ask a question of Ronnie O'Sullivan in this match. And we know how well he can respond. First to 10. 38. Still breathing room for both players but 7-5 at the interval Mark Selby would be jumping for joy Thirty-nine. to be absolutely safe he needs to pot another four reds and four colours Ideally, that'd be the ones in open play, so he's going to need one little cannon at some stage. 13. I just wonder whether he'd rather be on the pink or black, I think, to go into those four reds. He wouldn't want to go into them from the blue. 36. He goes into them from the blue. He has to play it very gently, and, and you know, he could push one safe and not push one over the pocket. As a last result, both reds go into the yellow pocket, but that is a last resort. I don't think any reds pot into 47. the middle pocket. So, very much dependent upon the angle here. He looks to be a little straighter on the black than he would have wanted. Screwing into these balls. Ah, it's a great shot, but it it was never guaranteed, was it? Yeah, it was, the black was perfect to play it. I mean, he put all his eggs in one basket there and had to rely on a perfect kiss. Playing the black, he could have got away with a bad kiss and still been on something. But this red is still cuttable. And the fact that he's, you know, in a position where he can win the frame at this visit, he's 34 in front, a red safe. This is worth the risk. 
And the risk has been rewarded. Has he got a good white? Not this time, so blue or any colour to red is going to be tough. He can consider himself a bit unlucky not to have a better angle on a colour than this. I don't know whether any of these three reds will pot. The brown's the best ball if one of them does. If it doesn't, he's going to have to play something else. He's playing the blue. Is he trying to screw up to hit them? That's what he's played, but the reds are in the middle just in case. There's a clever shot that played a miss, played a kiss them, and if he misses the kiss, he's on the red in the middle. Good shot. 59. Another very positive strike of the cue ball. How well did he get through that ball? Leaving the tip of the cue through the shot, guaranteeing a good follow through. Now this red into the middle pocket. Possibly a frame winner. 60. Very, very good. One more red needed. He's just checking, as you see that red disappear in the middle, he's just checking that the top red of these two is available. If it is without the kiss, this could be the frame winner. And obviously it must pop because he's played for it. This has been excellent from Selby. Frame 10, break 67. of 101. Frame 11, break of 89. This break of 67 and counting has been as good as those two. <coughs> Nothing lucky about this. A mistake from Ronnie O'Sullivan. And Mark Selby pounces. Sixty-eight. Now he's safe. You may see him decide to move the red off the cushion with the red which you don't normally see but you might want to go for the sentry clever shot Plays 74 doesn't have the angle to bring it into play even more so maybe we have to drop behind it into the opposite middle now this is all about pace decided to play for it in the corner Eighty-one. Well, that's three frames, two eighty pluses and a hundred. Top class. Oh, yeah. Eighty-two. <laughs> Amazingly, in the six frames before this frame, Mark Selby's breaks have been eighty-nine. 101, 41, 53, 50 and 76. Two of those frames he lost. 87. Yes, I've said many times on comments, if you make a break of 40 above in every frame, you'd be world champion. Well, he'd only be 3-2 in front if that was the case at the moment. That's such is the standard. Lost two frames with 53 and 41, but obviously when you make this 92. kind of break... It's impossible to lose a frame. This has been very, very good. So with six cents through the tournament coming up in two shots time. 96. And he came here under a lot of pressure defending this title. He's never, ever lost a match here at Wembley. And the way he's going, who's to say he won't lose this one? 101. A lot of Ronnie fans, but you have to respect the ability of young Selby the way he's played this evening. 107. And I've got to say, they have respected him as well. A fantastic round of applause as he came into the room. They do really like this player and a fantastic break. Well, that was superb, wasn't it? O'Sullivan dominated the early part of this evening session, but he's lost three of the frames. Back-to-back -back centuries from Selby. He goes into the interval, leading by seven frames to five.